Peace be to you. This is Omar Abdul Malik, the physician assistant and health educator. So I want to talk to you guys today about um, a question that I received in the comment section of one of my videos. And the question was asking whether or not I felt, or whether or not um, I believed that physician assistants would eventually replace doctors. Um, I, I don't, the short answer is no, I don't think so. Um, there is a reason why uh, physician assistants are our uh, supervisors. They've got uh, more than twice the, the training of PAs. So in order to become a physician assistant, you know, you've got to have a four-year degree. Um, many schools now want you to take the, uh, the graduate record exam, the GREs. Um, and then you do a usually a 24 to, to 30 month um, um, program, graduate program after that. And that includes about a year of didactic training. So you're in the, um, in the classroom and then a year, maybe almost a year and a half of, um, of rotations through, through various specialties. So OBGYN, pediatrics, um, ER surgery um, and then you sit for your uh, physician assistant national certification exam the, the pants now physicians um, have it a lot longer uh, they do four years undergraduate they take the MCATs the medical college aptitude test and then do four years of medical school and during that time they've got to take step one and two of the uh, United States Medical License Exam, that's the uh, USMLE, and then they get, um, then they have to uh, get matched for uh, for residency, and then they take um, step three. I'm sorry, um, yeah, step three comes before that, I believe. Um, so steps one, two, and three of the of the uh, United States Medical License Exam, um, and then they do a residency before their their uh, full-fledged licensed medical doctors um, and the, the lowest the guy low guys on the totem pole uh, quote-unquote are the uh, the people that that um, do like internal medicine and that, that's that's what um, one of my uh, um, a uh, doctor who, uh, with whom I work tells me he says no I'm just an internist man. <laughs> just a little internist uh, but that's pretty rigorous training so that's um, what four years undergraduate, four years med school, um, three year residency, that's 11 years right there. And then you throw in a fellowship, like maybe an, a fellowship is in, in hospitalist medicine or um, ICU medicine, um, intensive care. That's uh, another, or critical care is what they call it. That's another two years. So 13 years of training versus the, you know, really the six years of, of education slash training that, that I have as a PA. And then I worked also um, as a certified nursing assistant to get my um, direct patient contact hours. I did that for a few years. Uh, but, you know, it just doesn't, that's not on par with the rigorous training that, that medical doctors go through. I, I don't believe. Now, there's a lot of things that, that um, we PAs are able to do that, some MDs don't do like we can do line placement, um, pick lines, central lines, uh, but you know, there's certain doctors that just don't like doing those. It's not that they can't. It's just not. To, as one doctor told me, he says I haven't done those things in years. Um, but you know, I I um, I don't foresee physician assistants ever replacing doctors. There is a move. Um, toward hospital administration of some hospitals, especially for-profit hospitals, to use PAs in lieu of a lot of doctors. It, it's just, financially it makes sense, but I, it, the caveat is, is that it can be um, short-sighted, some would argue, um, if you're using people who don't have the same amount of training um, as, as a medical doctor, uh, so you can save money. I mean, if you think about it from a financial standpoint, you, know, you could save a lot of money. You pay uh, 
you pay the doctors, you pay a physician assistant, let's say a hundred inexperienced physician assistant, let's say you pay them a complete compensation package of about a hundred sixty to a hundred seventy thousand a year. Um, that includes malpractice insurance and, and uh, all that good stuff. Um, versus paying a physician two hundred fifty thousand or two hundred seventy thousand a year, um, you know, with compensation, uh, you're going to save money. Um, but um, you know, it, it's it's uh, it's it's kind of a double-edged sword because nobody, you know, when hospitals are in the proverbial red, um, a lot of that money. Meaning that they, you know they're um, they're not they're either not making a profit or they're just straight up losing money. It's the patient that usually is having to uh, pay to make the difference. So you you know I mean myself included, I'll get a bill and I'm like, well wait a minute, why is why are all these extra things on my bill? Like, oh well, you know they ordered this test and that test, and when you got your blood work done. There was other stuff that they added. I'm like, wait, I didn't need all that stuff. <laughs> but you know, they're they're um they've got to uh they being in the hospital administrators have got to uh um defray the cost of uh of any financial loss to the, the patients. I mean, and those patients who are either able to pay, either able and willing to pay out of pocket for for services or have the insurance coverage that will pay for the services and and, and I'll tell you, um, just my experience with medical billing, um, insurance companies are very, very um, uh, particular when it comes for paying for stuff. You know, they're, they're not in the habit of, of uh, paying for, for everything if, if, they can, if they can help it. So um, um, I, I think there are things on the horizon for physician assistants. Um, it, it's going to be a lot harder to get into PA school. You know, there's talk of introducing a PCAT, which is analogous to the MCATs for PA schools. Uh, there's talk of making the, um, the programs obligatory doctoral programs. So you're going to have a bunch of PAs that are doctor PAs. <laughs> um, there's residency, a couple of fellowship programs. I, I, I covered this in an earlier video. Uh, PAs, I I think PAs are going to start demanding higher salaries and and um, um, hour, hourly wages. I've already seen this. I mean, I was happy to be making fifty six thousand a year when when I first started back in two thousand. Um, but you know, you've got a new generation of PAs that are like, oh no, you know, I'm not working for any less than a starting salary of one hundred thirty per year, or, or you know, sixty five an hour. You know, that's what I want, and fresh out of school. Like, well, are you serious? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I think that's, that's a generational thing when, you, when you, you don't have really a reference to look back at the, the, the back in the day when, when PAs weren't making that much. But um, I, I do think that PAs in certain areas are going to function with greater autonomy. I function with a lot of autonomy. Um, places out in the Midwest, um, even in the inner city, where you don't have a you got you have a very poor distribution of of, uh, of um, doctors or doctors aren't even around. Uh, maybe PAs can can uh, um, do their own thing, so to speak. But I don't I don't think PAs ever will replace doctors, and I, I certainly don't think that they should. So that's that's my that's my answer. And uh, uh, for those of you guys that are uh, interested in becoming physician assistants like me, um, please feel free to contact me in the comments section. I'll give you my contact information. You can you can reach me via Instagram, and um, I might put my uh, my email. Also, it's a great profession. I've been doing it for 20 years. It's been around for a little over 50 years, and uh, salaries are good. Starting salaries are about 100. Five thousand, and after a few years, you can you can make close to two hundred if, if you're willing to hustle. But it's it's uh, it's been a lot of fun, and you get to help people. Okay, so I wish you guys the best of success in your positive endeavors.
you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section. Take care. Peace.